Late for a date? <laughs> no, I'm not. I just, uh... Aren't you hungry? Not really. Not even for a light repast? No. <laughs> Luca doesn't want to lie. He doesn't want to, like, be weird around her. So it's, like, a really tricky situation for Luca to be in right now. And he even, like, tried to encourage her to go eat or, like, eat something light or even a drink. Like, <laughs> he tried to bring her down to the lower level of the saloon. To be honest, I'm not feeling much like socializing. Could we stay up here and just the two of us? I think that sounds very nice. Oh, poor Lucas. And Elizabeth just like not being herself. She's still like a bit down um, after those bad reviews of her book. Lucas just like trying to convince his girlfriend to like go down to uh, the party. Um, yeah, it's a really tricky situation. Look at those stars. But I feel there might be a storm coming on. I don't know. Maybe we should go inside. There's not a cloud in the sky. Lucas, once again, he's trying to <laughs> convince his girlfriend to go downstairs to the party. And this is like the moment where he's like starting to be like really, really, really weird. And Elizabeth starts to realize, oh, hey, like, what is going on with you? Like, is everything okay? And she's like, not even a cloud in the sky. And Lucas is like, man, this woman is really smart and <laughs> she's not... Uh, she's not giving in to my pretend request, like, you know, to go eat, or, uh, she is not falling for it. So, like, it's just like, how am I gonna bring her downstairs without telling her that there's a party for her downstairs, um, to celebrate her book? In the book, do you know whether or not the Mountie is, is based on Elizabeth's late husband, Jack, or Nathan? Uh, I was about to ask whether he's the one Elsa winds up with in the end. Uh, Nathan courted Elizabeth? Does that surprise you? No, not at all. The first time I watched this scene on Sunday night, I didn't realize that first May asked a question to Faith about the book, like in the book world not in like real life in Hope Valley so Faith misunderstood her question and thought that May were asking if the Mountie was about either Nathan or Jack and May just like wait her book is inspired by real people in Hope Valley so it was just like a very explosive moment for me and she just like started thinking and um organizing her mental notes of what she knows so far about Nathan and she just like realized that Nathan told her Elizabeth and she already sent that there's something going on between Lucas and Elizabeth uh if you remember in the last episode at the ice cream shop so She's like, okay, so if Elizabeth and Nathan are not together, then she is with Lucas. So, like, if I was her, I'd be like, wait, were they, like, a love triangle going on? And the look that she gave toward Nathan at the end of this clip, she's just like, I don't know what to call it, like, a mix of jealousy, but Elizabeth not with Nathan. I don't know what to call that, but she, I think she was just, like, a, a mix of surprised and a bit jealous and something else. I don't know. I think she started to realize that she is really, really interested in Nathan. Our conversation about enjoying the little things in life really stuck with me. What about you? Lucas is still on the balcony with Elizabeth and it's really nice he's giving some comfort to Elizabeth by rubbing his hand on her upper arm 
Elizabeth having no clue what's going on downstairs and Lucas just being really, really patient with her. This is really <laughs> a tough situation for Lucas right now. Okay, Elizabeth, I, um, I wanted this to be a surprise, but it turns out I just have the worst timing. There is a saloon filled with people waiting to congratulate you on your book. To downstairs? Yes. Now? Yes. Lucas finally told Elizabeth what's really going on, and Elizabeth was purely surprised uh, compared to her later reaction to the other people at the saloon. Um, finally, Lucas told her. Oh, Lucas. I... I <laughs> Why didn't you say something sooner? I, I, thank you. You're not upset. So thoughtful. Elizabeth, like all women, like we women do, like, why you didn't tell me? And Lucas just didn't have any reason or a great explanation to tell her why he didn't tell her. And Lucas tried his best. But I really like how Elizabeth thanked him and and Lucas just like, you're not mad? And that look like, you're not mad at me? I like, try my best. And Elizabeth like, you're so thoughtful. And she put her hand, brushed her hand um, on his face, his cheek. And it's just a nice comforting um, assurance for Lucas that everything will be okay and that she will still enjoy the surprise party. And um, it's not really, a bad outcome for Lucas. Okay, good. I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, everyone down there, they've been keeping a secret. They wanted to surprise you. I could act surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? I can. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Lucas, he very deep rooted in Hope Valley, so he knows how Rosemary is, and Elizabeth, trying to encourage herself to be a really, really good actress like Rosemary and Lucas just like laugh it off. He's like, yeah, I don't think him pull it off. He laughed like in the sweetest way he could possibly do. And Elizabeth just like, oh, you don't believe me? You're not gonna uh, support me in trying to ask surprise. Okay, great. That'll be perfect. <laughs> Go down the outside staircase. I'll, I'll sneak in the back. I'll let everyone know that we're on our way. You ready? Oh, if you think Rosemary Coulter can deliver a performance, watch this. But again, it's thoughtful that Elizabeth is willing to do that, like to pretend to be surprised so that Luca doesn't get ashamed in front of everyone, uh, especially after how Luca pressure everyone else to keep this very low-key and quiet and surprised for Elizabeth, but now that's ruined, and he cannot be in the spotlight for ruining the surprise. Uh, but it's really funny though, Elizabeth got motivated by Rosemary and how Rosemary uh, did theater and how great as an actress she was. So Elizabeth like, if my friend can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Oh, God. It sure seems awfully sleepy in here tonight. Oh, my goodness! I was not expecting this at all! What a surprise! I wanted to show them. It's just <laughs> so hilarious. And Lucas just went along with it. But I'm sorry, Elizabeth. You went over the top in that scene. You made it too much. <laughs> and Rosemary can pick up on it. Good morning, Nathan. Lawrence. Have you read Elizabeth's book? No, not yet. When I watch this scene again, I just realized though, like, Florence not only as a friend, but she seemed to be like advertising Elizabeth's book. And she asked Nathan like, oh, have you read Elizabeth's book? I don't think she knew that Nathan already got the book and has he Elizabeth's books 
uh, on display at the mission tile. And I also thought, like, when Molly thought of, like, going into interior design, if you remember that, during Elizabeth party, um, Molly mentioned that. And I was thinking, like, oh, it would be cool if Florence goes into advertising. I don't know. Like, I thought of that for a second. And especially how Molly and Florence are, like, the the main gossiper in Hope Valley. I'm not trying to say that in a mean way, but you know how they are. So I was just like, oh, Florence can be like in in marketing, um, advertising stuff. Just a random thought. You see Nathan, he's like, I think he's avoiding, <laughs> he's avoiding to read Elizabeth book for some reason. And I assume maybe he heard some rumors and gossip about what happens in that book. How's the new pharmacist working out? Well, we had a curious start. But she seems to be doing quite well. Why do you ask? Just making conversation. Uh, Nathan, if I might, you've recently had your heart flouted. Don't be hasty and rush it to a new... Why don't I see if I can find that myself? Yeah, Nathan definitely avoiding Elizabeth Buck, and he asked about May, and did he, like, come with this, like, his mounty personality? He, like, still, like, trying to figure this new woman, May, out. Like, okay, like, who she really, really is. Like, he wants to know more about her. So, I can see that mounty detective skill right there. But at the same time, you can see that Nathan becoming more interested in May, like, on a personal level. And um, Florence just like, you know, telling Nathan what she know, but she doesn't know much. And then Florence like, oh, like, it's just about something else. Like, it's just more than what you trying to uh, show me here right now. And Nathan, of course, Nathan like block her off. Like, nope, I'm not going to talk about anything that relates to romance, love life. Like, nope, not going to talk to you about my love life. Have you read Elizabeth's book? No. Man. I haven't. And I'm not looking for a new courtship. And I don't have a flouted heart. Oh, Nathan. Ned even asked him, like, have you read Elizabeth's book? And, you like, this makes sense, though. Like, everyone, like... Probably like 90% of Hope Valley by now knows what happened in that book and something happened to the Mountie in that book. So they just want to know what Nathan thinks because they all know that this book is inspired by Elizabeth real life. Um, so this book is kind of like a little bit drama in Hope Valley. What can I do for you? I was hoping when you have time if you would uh, work with Newton again. I'd be happy to. How about tomorrow? Name the time. I'll meet you at the ring. Nathan, I think I should work with Newton alone. At least for now. Sure. Yeah, no, but whatever you think's best. Nathan is this hellish. Um, you can see that on the look of on his face. And face interrupted. Really interesting. Is it really a love triangle? I don't know. I don't want to go to another love triangle at all. Well, anyway, too soon? Yeah, I think too soon to say that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Faith interrupted, and you have to see Nathan just like just how it's like his, his plan to spend more time with May did not work out. And um, I think May knows what Nathan was trying to do. Am I interrupting? No, not at all. What do you need? Uh, calcium sulfide. I'll see what I have. Just let me know when's a good time. I'll come and get Newton. Anytime. Yeah, he'll be in the stable. Nathan just like walk away and may try to like keep the, the vibe like smooth, like not awkward. May, I should have come back. No, Faith, really, there's nothing between me and Nathan. And even if there were, I'm in no position to do anything about it. I'll get your calcium sulfide. They know there's something, something going on between Nathan and May. And she just like, kind of like, 
I don't know, like the third wing, like <laughs> uh, the third wheel uh, in this three-way relationship. <laughs> Interesting though that May mentioned like if like if there is anything like she can't do anything about it. So I'm just wondering like is she like still married or is she like in the middle of a divorce or something like it's like she like Nathan but she just can't do the extreme with him like go out on a dinner with Nathan or something like that uh, so something is holding her back from spending more time with Nathan like how Nathan tried to ask her out um, with on helping with Nathan Horace um, so something holding her back and in the meantime Nathan is discouraged and Faith is just like the prime audience member watching everything between Nathan and May unfold in front of her and I wouldn't be surprised if Faith gets jealous or if she may like Nathan too. Um, I did see like a tiny moment between Nathan and Faith at the end of season 8. Um, Nathan's hand got injured, um, if you remember that, and Faith came over and, um, helped bandage his hand. Uh, there was a, like, tiny spark between them in that moment. So I wouldn't be surprised if Faith, like, may start to like Nathan more, um, in a romantic way, in a love triangle, death loves, um, even though I don't want another love triangle, but I can see that happen. But I would be really surprised if the writers take that route again, especially with all the drama um, between Nathan and Elizabeth Lucas on social media during season eight. It was chaotic. Like, if you're a team Nathan, like, not trying to, like, talk bad about your team, but it's just, like, I don't know, it's just, like, fire and ice <laughs> between Team Lucas and Team Nathan. Um, so yeah, I don't want to go through that just for the sake of social media. But then again, you know, it should have been a fun conversation, a fun competition um, on social media talking about these two guys competing for Elizabeth Hart. Uh, so yeah, I'm ranting on, but we'll see how this goes. We're still on episode three, so we have nine more episodes. <laughs> Aussi tonight. Jeanette, j'ai besoin de plus de temps pour gagner sa confiance. Hi. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. I um, I, sh I should be done this call in a moment. Well, why don't I go speak with Gustav? I'd like to ask him about a recipe. I'll come out as soon as I'm finished. Every time Lucas speaks in French, it's like always a serious business, a serious matter. So we got the name of the woman that he was talking to. I was thinking like it did the same woman that he tried to help out when he first came to Hope Valley um, with that, with the gambling money issue and the bad guys uh, kidnap Elizabeth at the saloon. I don't know if did the same friend. I don't know. I don't know if I missed anything. Let me know. But I just thought, oh, it is the same fun that Lucas um, had when he first came to Hope Valley um, from his past, like a friend from his past. So we got her name. And then, oh, I also thought, um, so her name is Janet, right? Janet? I hope I pronounced it right. I thought of like the author of the One of the Heart book, <laughs> Janet Oak. I was like, did they do that on purpose? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Elizabeth knows that there's something going on and Luke is trying to stay home. Uh, he doesn't want to show any worry or concern. He doesn't want to pass that on to Elizabeth. Um, hopefully, this is not one of those situations where Elizabeth gets captured again in the saloon. And also, before I forget, he mentioned to his friend, like, I need more time to earn his trust. And the first person that hung to mind, like, or right, his trust. So it's a man. It had to be Walden. Um, Walden is in Hope Valley, and we still have, like, no idea exactly, like, what is his actual plan in Hope Valley. And we all know he's a, 
an enemy in Hope Valley and unfortunately they cannot kick him out right now. So Luke just needs more time to earn his trust and that is Walden and we need to find out what's the connection between Lucas, Walden and Lucas' friend Janet. Tu dois m'écouter. Oui. Wyman Walden. Wyman Walden. Je peux t'aider à lui arrêter, mais je ne peux pas le faire tout seul. Tu m'écoutes? So it is Wyman Walden, um, the prime nemesis, uh, the prime enemy uh, in season nine of One Heart to Heart. We already knew that he is a bad guy from season 8 and now his storyline is continuing in season 9 of the show. Uh, there is a connection between Lucas and Janet and Wyman. Like what happened in the past with Lucas friend and Walden. So it's just um, another mystery to unfold. Hopefully this doesn't like bring like any bad drama between Lucas and Elizabeth. We'll see how she reacts uh, when she finds out whatever's going on. And I'm wondering if Janet gonna visit Hope Valley, you know? Like, is that a possibility? Um, oh, Lucas. So, this doesn't look good. Of course, like, Lucas needs to have some trouble. Like, he cannot be, like, having a perfect life. Like, you know how the writers are, they always chose something for each character in the show. So that's the end of episode 3 of season 9. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, again, feel free to comment down below. Um, share this channel with your hearties, friends. Uh, the more the merrier. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support and patience. And thank you for sharing your thoughts and prediction and answering the teacup question. I really appreciate it. It's really fun to talk with some of you and if you haven't talked to me like talk to me I'd like to get to know you and talk about this show um the teacup question of the day I do want to talk about this like what is the secret of May Sue what do you think happened to Jeffrey um give me all your traditions build your tea like tell me what you think is going on with her and why she came to Hope Valley that teacup question will be down below. Answer my question down there and any thoughts and any opinions you may have on the second half of episode 3. Feel free to jot them down in the comment section below. This has been fun and I look forward to episode 4. I will see you next week on Wednesday. Bye.